Hello, Link341. Uh, we will be talking today about intensity. Uh, the goal is to get to understand how stress works in stress languages, but we want to first learn about loudness and intensity, as this will be kind of a prelude to what's going to come later, which we talked uh, about already, a little bit at least. Uh, we said that um, stress in English is phonetically um, difficult to measure. I've uh, repeated multiple times that stress is uh, complex and uh, you've encountered these contrasts uh, already, such as proceeds, contrast, oops. contrast, proceeds and proceeds, contrast, 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 Con contrast, contrast. contrast. One is a noun, another is a verb proceeds and proceeds uh, one is a verb and another is a noun and um, some of you expressed that this is difficult to uh, understand but hopefully we will try to make sure to understand what intensity is and uh, start from there because phonetically stress is hard to define it is hard to measure um, basically stress depends on the interaction of three quantifiable variables pitch, duration, and loudness. Um, I'm going to draw again here. So pitch, duration, and loudness. These three are important. And there is also quality. Um, quality adds to um, uh, stress as a cue, you know, as a certain signal to stress, because when you have con contrast, right, this vowel reduces to schwa in contrast uh, so this is another cue to uh, stress proceeds this full vowel reduces to schwa and we call this vowel reduction so uh, quality of the vowel changes right it's not anymore a low back unrounded ah but it's schwa and pitch is essentially f0 um, and have zero movements. Uh, duration is length. We also talked a little bit about that. And uh, finally, uh, loudness, we will talk about it. And it could be um, sort of equated with intensity in this respect. Right. All right. So you remember a sine wave and the question on that we ask with respect to a sine wave is how do we measure how loud a sound is right how loud a sound is well we use certain parameter that is called amplitude amplitude is basically measured a measurement of air pressure in time and this air pressure can be at any spot where we choose it to be when we choose it to be the highest amplitude or the highest spot here where the um, sine wave reaches its maximum we call it a peak amplitude right and this part here from from uh, the top to the uh, bottom we call peak to peak amplitude um, peak amplitude is the highest sound pressure reach during particular wave cycle and we measure loudness based on this amplitude the greater the amplitude the louder the sound the louder the sine wave right you've probably heard uh, about the amplitude of the earthquake, earthquake, for example, um, amplitude of the earthquake is described as the magnitude of vibration of the ground with seismometer or seismometer. Um, in our case, we are interested not in the vibrations of the ground, but we are interested in the vibrations or not say vibrations, but movement of air molecules. And air molecules move you know if you remember in compressed and rarefied way so they are compressed and the highest 
where the highest uh, pressure is and rarefied lowest pressure is but essentially uh, these explain or these describe positive uh, peak amplitude and negative peak amplitude which are uh, the same in this case with our sine wave right um, the higher the peak as I said a peak amplitude of sinusoidal sound the louder the sound seems to be uh, let's check out the, these ones So basically, you can you can hear this one very well and loudly because this amplitude is the highest one. Uh, the first two have the same frequency because of the number of the uh, cycles and the number of the times your vocal folds open and close um, in principle. But uh, here uh, they have the same frequency, although they have this different amplitude or different um removal of of the the, the 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 air pressure from zero so this one the first one is the highest the second one is the lowest and the third one is has a very low amplitude again okay sorry and um, therefore we hear this one as the loudest So this is hopefully very intuitive to understand. The higher the oscillation of air pressure, the more intense the movement of air molecule, the greater the loudness. And this is simple to understand and even measure. Um, you know, I have already said the first one has 0 0.5, the second maybe 0 0.25, and the third something very small. Um, when it comes to complex waves, things get more complex right um, and something I wanted to mention to you is how to produce how to record a sine wave when you need it if you need it anytime and this is just for let's say for kicks uh, so I'll show you now um, how my wife did it so uh, this is my wife uh, producing a whistling sound now I'll try to grab the pitch that will capture it, but I doubt it will. Let me see, this is maybe too much. Okay, not too bad, but there are so many uh, irregularities here. So she's basically whistling, and I ask her to whistle, right? Let's grab this chunk. Yeah, so uh, that's her whistling, and if we grab um, any part of this and increase it a little bit, so in, let's say, and then I want to increase it further, let's say this one, you can see it's a sine wave, right? So it's a periodic wave of a sound that is being repeated in uh, regular intervals in pretty much regular intervals right uh, because it's a whistle there is some kind of amplitude uh, distinctions but in general the amplitude is similar it, in, is, it is increased a little bit here decrease a little bit here and then it goes up back then uh, this sine wave sounds i'll grab a greater chunk sounds like a kind of a key on your telephone or or, or a key on a atm a atm machine or something like that so uh, that's how you produce sine wave by whistling i did it as well I'm not a good whistler, um, and um, but but still I could make it. Yeah, my sine waves are so chaotic. Let's grab this one. Yeah, you see, uh, it's still a sine wave, but um, 
not so periodic and quite interestingly mine you grab maybe this this one is better mine is even higher than hers so that's how we whistle right so if you want to whistle um, give it a shot and uh, produce something like this or maybe something like this yeah okay so you can have fun with with that one right um, if you need it anytime as I said uh, sine waves are very easy it's very easy to um, calculate amplitude and loudness in sine waves on sine waves but things get more complex with complex waves and that's why we have uh, the RMS amplitude measurement peak to peak amplitude is sufficient for characterizing the loudness of sine waves but speech sounds are more complex and another method of measuring loudness is what we call root mean square or RMS shorter amplitude uh, to calculate RMS amplitude you should square the pressure value of the waveform at each point sample in the sound file, sound file average all the squared values and take the squared root of the average I'll walk you through the process uh, but I might want to show you uh, yeah I didn't I did not uh, save the files that was a huge mistake so I'll whistle again maybe So not so bad but I believe there's many of you who could do it better uh, anyways I'll grab this chunk maybe okay mm, okay so it, it does look like a sine wave and um, an amplitude is any spot that I choose to be here right on this wave the peak amplitude, for example, should be 0 0.1214. The amplitude at a, at a point of, of a, um, what is this, 2.51 seconds is 0 0.053 and so on and so forth. So you can go and grab the amplitude values at any point in time, right? And then you square this value you multiply it by itself right so again you could have something like 0 0.035 and you multiply it by itself whatever that might be um, let me grab a calculator again so calculator 0 0.036 0 0.036 equal to 0 0.001 and so on so forth you can also do it like this 0. Uh, 0 0.036 squared you see this value is uh, or this symbol is for squaring something is the same value we get okay so that's clear i guess and that's the first step in calculating the root mean square. Square the pressure value of the waveform at each point in the sound file. Average all the squared values, so you average them with the number of times you square them, um, or through the number of times you square them, and take the square root of the average. And as simple as that, you receive some kind of amplitude, right? Uh, that is called RMS or root mean square in this case it should be call, called square mean root but they call it root mean square for some reason um, yeah so we, we we will do it step by step as I said the first one was for example the one that we saw 0 0.036 right squared then um, 
I'll uh, grab another calculator if I can. Let's see. It won't allow me. Okay. I'll just memorize this 0.001. Um, the second part could be something like what's this 0.014. Okay, 0.014. Uh huh. Zero point zero fourteen squared. It's zero point zero 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 one. All right. This will be very small. So you average all the square values by, uh, I guess, uh, doing this plus zero point zero zero one. The first value that we received equals this divided by two. I guess this would be our average of all the squared values, which is low, right? Right, but it is what it is. And then take the square, take the square root of the average. Let's do that. Mm, I don't have a square here. Square root of the average. Hmm, interesting. But I guess you know what it means to take a square root of the average. Uh, it's easy to do in other programs, in other calculators, rather than this one, which is weird. Okay, I'll maybe, uh, okay, say, okay, this is our square root. So this is the symbol for square root, and you have to square the value that you received. Right, now, I'm going to show you how this works. So a small sample of a sine wave has the following pressure values. So let's say that we want to take a pressure value at one. So this is one point in time that we want to take pressure value and it's one, right? Then we want to take a pressure value at uh, point two and that's two. Then we want to take a pressure value at point three and that's zero and so on and so forth. We enter the negative values right here until we come to number eight or oh, we won't count number nine because it belongs to another cycle right let's count let's just uh, try to do this with this one cycle so what we do is take pressure value which is amplitude 0 0.707 at different points right at different points in time Okay, we've done that. Now, the next step would be to square the values of each sample only by uh, up to sample of nine of eight, right? So when we square them, uh, and you can go step by step uh, yourself if you want to, um, I'll say, for example, the first one, one squared is one. One multiply with one is one. 0 0.707 multiplied by itself is 0 0.5, right? Uh, then zero, po zero multiplied by itself is zero, and 0 0.707 multiplied by itself is 0 0.5, and so on and so forth. When we come to minus, okay, minus 0 0.707, so minus squared, it will give us a positive value. And that's what we want. So we want a positive value. That's one uh, objective of this first step to receive the positive values. Because when you think about it, when you think about the displacement of the air pressure in terms of loudness, uh, you will refer to it as it is loud, right? It's not negatively loud, right? It, it, it has some amplitude. It, in, in acoustic world, it does have a negative amplitude as well, but in uh, your perceptual world, when you perceive, you cannot have a negative, negative amplitude or negative value, right? In, the, in that case. So basically, we want to square them and um, just by disallowing these uh, negative values, right, which are here. Um, then the second step, so this would be the first step, the second step is to average all the squared values. So 
1 plus 0 0.5 plus 0 plus 0 0.5 plus 1 and so on and so forth divided by the number of samples that's how we do the average or the mean right we want to receive the mean and that's that account that ends up being 4 over 8 which is 0 0.5 right 0 0.5 value we received some value then take the square root the third step would be to take the square root of the average which would be so square root of 0 0.5 would be 0 0.707 and that's the root mean square amplitude of our wave this would be a simple case so a sine wave and you get more complex cases of sine waves which i'm going to show to you um, right now uh, this is a more complex case so also a sine wave this sine wave is called a square uh, square sine wave and this sine wave is kind of angled off at the tops and bottoms you see it's uh, um, it's very abrupt and it has the values of one all over the place right and minus one in at any point in time our goal of calculating the rms is to understand how far an average on average actually the values are from zero so from this point how far on average the values are from zero how far on average the air pressure is from zero um, by looking at it you can see that the values uh, will be further than the values for, for for the sine wave because everything is at one uh, and everything is one uh, across the board so if we um, repeat the steps we will first uh, square the values all the values uh, squared will be one as simple as that and uh, then average the values, the squared values, which will be eight by eight, right? Which is one again, and RMS amplitude is one. It would still be higher than our RMS amplitude for this one, for this guy here, right? And that's how you do it for this um, kind of a simple case of the square um, uh, wave. Um, so the square wave should be louder and here it is should be louder this is square wave than this this wave right because of its amplitude and this is a, what is, what we call a sawtooth wave this wave also should be louder because it has this angled off um a sharp um, divisions right so they all have the same peak to peak amplitude but the peak amplitude the average amplitude the rms is different and therefore we uh, hear them differently right we perceive them as louder these two than the first one and this is what we want to do with the rms okay to measure on average how further away amp uh, air pressure is from the zero from its state of of no air pressure right finally we come to the concept of uh, intensity so far we have two measurements first one was peak amplitude of the sine waves and the second one was rms or root mean square of the amplitude of the of the sine waves and the root mean square could be used for complex waves as well so don't get me wrong it could be used for those um si uh, peak amplitude is mainly used for simple waves and we come to the third measurement which we call intensity intensity is uh, also widely used measurement and uh, there are two related concepts uh, which we want to know about the first one is power and the second one is intensity power 
in this case refers to just the square of amplitude. So basically the intensity of a sound is a power relative to the power of some reference sound, which we'll, we'll, we'll see in a minute. But the, oops, but the power is just the square of amplitude and that's what we have been doing in a way we were squaring our amplitudes right uh, and we want to receive the power of certain wave the intensity then of a sound is is its power relative to the power of some re reference sound so we are comparing the two sounds and we are comparing the reference sound most of the time uh, intensity is measured in decibels and decibels is a measure of intensity with reference to the quietest sound human ears can hear. So basically what we have here is, um, is power and intensity is power relative to the power of this quietest sound that we can hear. Sometimes we also have a relation between between two sounds between two intensities to determine how loud something is or how uh, loud in relation to something else something is right um, in some intensity is a widely used measurement and we uh, ref we have a um, reference to it and that is the quietest sound the human ears can hear i won't tell you what sound that is you might probably google it but don't not yet maybe after this lesson and uh i'll just say that it's a very quiet sound the human ears can hear and maybe if i have time show you um my report from audiologists when uh, they were checking my ears so they were playing very loud sounds and very or not very loud sounds, relatively loud sounds and very um uh, quiet sounds to see or check how my uh, eardrums are working whether they are vibrating whether they are uh, working at all right uh, because if you um uh, if your eardrums explode and that can happen under certain uh, pressure circumstances they heal after time they just need a bit more time to heal so they get back into the state hopefully that they were at before the injury um, and uh, you go to the audiologist you go to the um, uh, professionals to check out which frequencies you can hear they play you very low frequencies very high frequencies and uh, loud uh, whether you can hear loud less loud and uh, very quiet sounds um, so it's a, it was a fun exercise for me in the end all right uh, let's talk about some numbers so um, what we know what we want to know is the math behind the measurement of intensity the intensity of a sound x can be measured in bells where bells or a bell is defined as uh, this is uh, hopefully familiar to you to some point this is a log to the base 10 of the power of the sound x over the power of the reference sound so r squared is the power of the reference sound x squared is the power of the sound x basically we want to show um, intensity through math and this is how you do it uh, a decibel is the tenth of a bell it turns out that bell here was very high number so a very high number to refer to this to sounds so they wanted to reduce it to something that we usually and uh, normally use and those were the decibels so decibel is just a tenth of a bell so that's how, that's why we uh, say intensity in decibels is 10 times and then this equation up uh, that i just showed to you um, so something of a, for example nine bells would be 90 decibels right and that's more relatable to what uh, we have uh, today and what we are hearing. So we want to make sure 
to understand what this math means by answering the question how does the acoustic power of 60 decibel sound compare to the acoustic power of 30 decibel sound? Um, normally, we think of intensity of one sound in reference, sorry about that, in reference to another. And we want to ask the following question, just like I did. So we usually think of uh, intensity in reference to another intensity, right? And that's... Uh, the, where the math gets more complex or more complicated. But uh, I'm uh, definitely sure that you can do it because we are going to simplify and simplify. So let's say that sound X, some sound X has an intensity of 60 decibels, right? 60 decibels. Um, what we're going to do is say 60 decibels equals our uh, equation from the previous page, right? This one. We can divide both sides of this equation by 10 to get six equals log to the base of 10 and then the rest. Um, so we want to lose this zero. I'll draw again. We want to lose this zero and especially this number because it's unnecessary. We want to simplify as mu as much as we can, right? Okay. Now let's take a look at the sound Y. So we have two sounds. One sound is Y, and another sound is X. Okay. Uh, this sound has sixty, and this sound has thirty decibels. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. I can say has intensity of thirty decibels or is 30 decibels in intensity. 30 decibels equals um, the following equation and we simplified by uh, losing the 10 and zero here by di uh, dividing both sides to uh, by 10 and we get this little guy here, right? Okay, now um, we don't know what log is, essentially we don't, right? But we want to do something. We want to maybe go to the um, UFC or Linguistics 341 uh, course webpage and check out some handouts. And so click link 341, handouts, logarithms, decibels, intensity review sheet. And here you go. So here you have a review sheet that is that explains what bells are, what power is, what intensity is, what logarithms are, exponents, meaning those little numbers in the in the corner, 10 to the power of two, for example, and so on and so forth. And it finally explains uh, logarithms. So you can check out what uh, they mean and uh, go through this uh, short sheet on your own right so how yeah the next thing we want to do is to answer what's logarithm what's the logarithm anyway so we want to compare x to the power of 2 and y to the power of 2 because they are both uh, uh, sounds that we are concerned with we, we just want to compare them uh, they're both stuck in that log uh, and uh, parentheses factor though how do we get them out so how do we simplify it even more if you're calculating the log to the base 10 and some number here value of or log to the ba base 10 value of some number you're effectively calculating how many times you have to multiply 10 by itself to get that number so and when we are talking about uh, some number, I'm talking about the number that goes inside the uh, parentheses. So let's say we're talking about the logarithm to the base of 10, of the number 10, right? So we put the number 10 in, in this one. How many times do we need to multiply 10 by itself to get that number, right? 
So in this case, it's only one, only once, right? Likewise, a logarithm to the base 10 of the number 100 would be two, right? How many times do you have to multiply 10 by itself, by 10, to get that number, to get the number 100? Well, it's two. And logarithm uh, to the base 10 of the number 1000 would be three, right? Uh, one way to conceptualize this, this one is that uh, you just need to count the number of zeros in the numbers we are analyzing here. So basically um, we would have one zero here, so that would be one, two zeros here, that would be two, and three zeros here, that would be three. Now, it gets much more complex when you have other numbers, such as, uh, I don't know, let's say 68, and then I guess logarithm to the, to the base of 10 would be something like that, 1.8. Uh, so a number between, between these two, right? as expected but it's more complex and we don't want to be concerned with it right away or right now because we don't want to take uh, all those complex um, measurements we just want to learn to conceptualize this and to learn some math behind it right uh, with that in mind your logarithm to the base of 10 uh, the number one would be zero because you cannot you cannot have it. You cannot say how many times you have to multiply 10 by, its, by uh, itself to get one. Well, zero times, right? And that's, that's basically it. All right, hopefully this is understood. Um, I'll just repeat once again. So how many times you have to multiply 10? 10, 10 multiplied by itself, right? To get to get the number 10, right? So we say just one because 10 multiplied by one is 10 as well. And that's how you, you, you calculate this uh, logarithm to the base of 10 anyways. All right. The relationship between the logarithm and its values gives us a tool for unpacking the numbers inside the parentheses in these equations. If logarithm to the base of 10 of the number 1000 is 3, that's because 10 to the power of 3 is 1000, right? So what we did is uh, actually we just converted this relationship and now we can calculate this much more easily um, basically this 10 right goes there and 3 goes on top of the 10 10 to the power of 3 equals how how much 1000 right 10 multiplied by 10 is 100 and multiplied by 10 is 1000. The same thing we can do with 2 and so on and so forth. So the general pattern becomes obvious. Logarithm to the base of 10 is B equals A means that 10 to the power of A is B. And that's how we can we can calculate or unbox this relationship. This will be crucial because we want to now simplify it in a different way. We want now to uh, compare the two sounds. With that algebraic trick in our toolkit, we can go back to an equation like this logarithm to the base of 10 x uh, squared 
over r squared equals 6, right? And unpack it as, as the following. So as we said, remember log 10, right? Is any number here, it can be any number, right? B equals A. If we know that, we know that 6 is A in this case, and this equation here is B, right? What we want to do, as I explained in the previous one, we want to have this 10 here, 6 on top of it, and we get uh, here B, right? So this would be 10 A equals B again. And if we replace those values with the values that we have, we will see that is this A is actually 6 and B is actually this equation x squared over r squared. If we multiply both side of that, uh, sides of that equation by r squared, then we get this equation here. So basically, we want to find out the value of this one, or not exactly the value, but the value that would refer to another value, to another sound, which is y, right? And we, which we will see it uh, in the other page. So in simple terms, what, what we did here, okay, another color, maybe maybe that one okay in, sim in simplified terms if uh, 6 equals 18 over 3 right then I can say well that's good I like that and 18 in this case can be x right x squared and this could be r squared and this could be our you know 10 to the power 6 uh, in this case I can say well then x squared or 18 equals 6 multiplied by 3 right and there you have it so that's what we did actually with this equation although in this equation we have two unknowns and that's x squared and r squared right now one more time we do the same trick with sound y so we just we repeat the same uh, same steps with sound y and in the end we get remember sound y is three decibels uh, or three something, right? Uh, we can unpack it, or three bells, sorry, three bells uh, because we uh, we lost uh, the 10. So it's three bells, we can unpack it and, uh, and say that 10 to the power of three equals y squared through r squared. If we multiply both sides of that equation by r squared, then we get the following equation, right? As simple as that. All right, so we got the two equations. We got x squared equals 10 uh, to the power of six multiplied r squared and y squared equals 10 to the power of three multiplied by r squared. You can already see that x is higher than y, right? It is higher, but we don't know for how, how much, right? How big this difference is. How do the powers of the two sounds match up with one another? X squared, in this case, is 10 to the power of 6 over 10 to the power of 3, three times greater than Y uh, squared. What we did here is basically uh, we lost this r squared. We lost this r squared and said, okay, 
Well, from this equation, it follows that x squared, or from these two, follows that x squared is 10 power 6 over 10 to the power of 3, right? Times greater than than r than uh, y squared, because we uh, got rid of these two by simply uh, dividing both both of them with 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 it, and we just got this one, this sound here. Now, this means that. 10 to the power of 6, 6 minus 3 is 3, right? We get 10 to the power of 3, which is 1000 times. So this sound, x squared, is 1000 times more powerful than y squared. In other words, a 30 decibel increase in intensity translates to 1000 fold increase in acoustic power, in acoustic power, not a 30 times increase in power, right? It's 1000 fold increase. And important to remember is that intensity in decibels increases linearly. So it's, uh, you know, from 30 to 40 to 50 and so on and the power increases exponentially, so much more, right? Uh, exponentially more. We don't say, okay, if it's, uh, if it uh, intensity increases from 30 to 40, it's a 10 uh, times more. No, it's more. And you can tell me how much more uh, it is in uh, uh, the intensity of 40 and uh, versus 30 decibels so that uh, you can do that for your homework assignment but it's pretty easy now that we have all the um, all the uh, uh, math equations and all the all the toolbox all the equipment i want you to understand this part because i will ask you to walk me through all of these um mathematically and I will ask you to compare the two sounds uh, in this fashion on your homework, acoustics homework, that is going to um, be given to you very, very soon. Right, so uh, that's how you measure intensity and the logarithmic relationship at the core of the calculation of intensity enables the decibel scale to capture the very wide range of intensities that humans, the human ears are sensitive to. So for example, some typical decibel values are, for example, 30 dBs, a very quiet library, soft whisper, whisper, soft. Then living room, refrigerator that was working all all the time it stopped now thank god uh 50 decibels light traffic quite office right there is a lot of chatter in there 60 decibels normal conversation usually when two people speak 70 decibels vacuum cleaner hair dryer 80 decibels city traffic and garbage disposal uh it's it becomes louder right L uh, louder and louder and usually uh in a class i'm talking with in 70 decibels for example because i need to be louder um than i usually am and uh, at 90 decibels sustained exposure to sound starts to co cause hearing damage so be careful right subway motorcycle lawnmower <coughs> sorry uh, these are all 90 decibels chainsaw pneumatic drill which are very loud are 100 decibels and you know that's why people uh, use headphones when they are doing this when they are using chainsaw lawnmower and, um, and those very loud machines uh, rock concert in front of speakers thunderclap these are 120 decibels and that's maybe good for you for just uh, an hour <laughs> but not more than that if you are in front of speakers, especially not, right? 
above 130 decibels, uh, sounds cause pain and immediate hearing damage. Uh, the, this is a pain threshold, 130 decibels, a gunshot blast, jet plane, 140, and rocket la launching at 180 decibels. So you are, as I said, these are exponentially greater, much more greater than you would think. Uh, it's not just 10 times more, 20 times more. No, it's uh, 1,000 times more. It's million times more, right? In in um, in power. So that is why you should be careful and um, be aware of these numbers, right? Of, of 130 decibels of pain threshold. Um, there are known cases of losing hearing because of gunshot blast or um, grenade blast in war, especially in those circumstances. Yes. So uh, we now know what these refer to, and uh, it's very it's easier for us to understand how intensity works, right? Uh, the perceived loudness depends on frequency as well as amplitude. So mid-range frequencies sound louder than low or extremely high frequencies. Um, essentially, this is because our ears and our capacity to hear allows us to hear better those mid-range frequencies than a low range frequencies. Frequencies You've probably heard of a bat or a son sonar. Uh, they, they bats can uh, capture very low frequencies that you cannot hear and that's how they uh, hunt. Uh, those frequencies are not perceivable by our ears, by our uh, perceptual machine, but uh, those uh, higher frequencies are and a frequency of 100 Hertz is very low mm -hmm. it's some humming uh, mm. uh, 250 Hertz is uh, much better for us 440 Hertz is even better and 100 Hertz I'll play them again uh, with the same volume for 4000 sorry 1000 Hertz or 4000 Hertz and finally 10,000 Hertz yeah, that can be disturbing for your ears, but essentially, essentially, these middle ones are much better heard, perceived than uh, than the boundary ones or the edge edge frequencies. Um, as our ears are uh, predetermined, uh, predisposed to hear those frequencies better, right? An interesting fact, and I'll uh, stop here, is that some vowels are louder than others. Decibels of different vowels relative to A ah in uh, Fonagi's uh, research are the following. Um, relative to A, ah, so Ah, obviously, is uh, the loudest one. Then there is E, then there is O, then there is E, and U. And why is that so? What do you think? I'll uh, not answer it right now. I'll leave this for you to think about. And I will shall see you at the next lesson. Thank you very much and um, have a great day.